today. Um, it is, my name is Brian Seitel. It's Wednesday, June 21st, and I'm coming at you here live, uh, first day of summer of 2023. I hope everyone has some fun plans um, in the calendar with, with family and kids and all that. Um, and I know this is exactly what you were looking for, uh, just the same as when you were kids uh, entering summer, is to get a, a market action breakdown and some inflation talk and Federal Reserve talk. But nonetheless, I've got it all for you, and I'll sort of go through the day. Um, futures hung in there okay last night. Obviously, yesterday was a down day in the stock market. Um, futures were benign, I'd say, through the night. Markets actually opened at lower, call it 150, 160 maybe a little bit more um, points on the day. There was a, uh, a Fed testimony today on Capitol Hill that markets were sort of anticipating to see what Jerome Powell would say next about rates and the Fed and the economy and inflation and all that. Um, I mean, we just had their you know, meeting last week, so it's been all of what, two, two or three days here. So I don't know, markets were really expecting a whole lot. Um, but market ended up closing on the day off of the lows, although it did pull back a little bit. It was down about 102 points on the day. Um, uh, rates on the long end of the curve um, didn't move a lot. Ten-year Treasury was up two basis points, closed at 372, basically unchanged more or less. Um, Short-term rates have moved. The last couple of days, you've seen something like a six-month Treasury move up about 10 basis points, which is a little more meaningful. So like on a day like today, you've got some sell off in some of those more interest rate sectors of the, of the market. Um, technology was the worst performing sector today. It was down about 1.4%. <clears throat> and uh, utilities were up, which is a real interest rate sensitive part of the market. Um, they were up something like 0.8% uh, uh, on the day. <clears throat> all in all, I felt like today was sort of a, a real start to summer, which is it was kind of a quiet day in markets. Um, not a lot of volatility. Volatility came down again a little bit today. Um, so just kind of a quiet summer day in, in markets, um, but there was some, some good news to go through. So uh, speaking of the Fed today, um, so Jerome Powell uh, answered his barrage of questions from Congress and basically stuck to the same message, which is that the July meeting is a live meeting, that they may raise rates, but it's all data dependent. But if you look at their dot plots, which is sort of their estimate of where rates are going to go, um, they're going to, they see 50 basis points more increase before the end of the year. So call it two more 25 basis point hikes. Um, he, he affirmed that he basically said, just look at that. And that's about what we think. And so you get a good picture of it. Um, markets actually rallied a little bit on, on that. Um, not a lot, but they were, you know, you know came up to positive territory, at least mid morning before kind of pulling back down. Um, for what it's worth, the, the expectation or, or the, the uh, Fed futures um, uh, numbers are predicting a 74% chance of a 25 basis point hike in July, so a month, about a month away. So I personally, I mean, I think markets um, are trading better because the end is in sight. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's some certainty around it, meaning that the Fed's been pretty clear and pretty much just going with Fed futures as far as where they're going to take rates. And so you're looking at, you know, 25 bips and then another 25 before the end of the year. Already we're at five to five and a quarter. It's not really that much of a difference. Um, I think the real reason markets are hanging in there is because earnings have come out better than expected. Guidance was low. And so while earnings are going to be down most likely in Q2, call it 6%, give or take, there's different analysts predicting different numbers, but <clears throat> they'll be down a little bit on the quarter um, year over year, meaning a year from year ago. They're still expected to be up in Q3, and they're expected to be up handsomely in Q4 year over year. And so for the year, positive. So if you have rates more or less the same, but earnings that have, have moved up, then you get markets that have a little bit of bandwidth to, to, to trade higher. Um, all that said, I mean, it, um, it, it, it has been in, um, I don't want to say unloved, but it's, it's, there hasn't been a ton of participation in the rally. The, the wall of worry that the market is climbing is, is real. Um, but we are starting to see inflows. So equities took in like $40 billion, um, uh, which is, which is a decent amount. If you look at sentiment, like, like a, like a bull, bull bear ratio, uh, it's something like 54% of those respondents are, are bullish and only 20% are bearish, <clears throat> which contrarian is, um, is, is, is kind of a negative because you're getting more people now expecting things to go higher. That means more people have sort of bought in. We can see some leverage ratios in markets too. 
So like in, in hedge funds and, and alternatives, um, the percentage of long only S and P 500 futures is, is, is high, you know, historically high. So those things aren't necessarily good, but to me, that just speaks to short-term pullback, not necessarily anything fundamental. The fundamental part is that earnings have been, um, coming in pretty well and, and the economy is, is weathering this, the storm of interest rates, higher interest rates really quite well. Um, David wrote this yesterday. I thought it was clever. Um, the, you know, if you, if you went back 14 months, and you looked at where Fed funds was then, which is one quarter of 1%, so zero, basically. Um, and the S&P is something around 4,400 at that point. Uh, this would have been something like uh, April of 2021. Um, uh, uh, sorry, 2022, uh, beginning of 2022. Um, uh, and you looked at S&P at 4,400, and you said, well, I'm going to raise rates 500 basis points in the next 14 months. Where will the S&P be? Um, I mean, few would say it would be at the same level of 4,400, but that's exactly where we are. And my point to saying that is just as basically nobody predicted that rates would go up so much, so much in such a short period of time, I just, you've got to be humble enough to expect that the opposite is possible. You know, I'm not necessarily predicting that. I'm just saying that I think it's foolish to say that rates are just going to stay where they are for a long period of time. Historically, that isn't really that accurate. And, um, and, you know, just like I, I said before, I, I think if they were late to, to starting the party, the tightening party, um, uh, you know, they, they may have to end it earlier than expected as well. Um, and I don't say that is a good thing. If they're going to do that, it means that the economy is starting to break. So that's the real question. Like, like what, what are they going to cause uh, them to, what, what's going to cause them to have to reverse course and in interest rates and it's not going to be something good. Um, so all, all that said, um, there was a number out um, today um, from uh, for in the UK. It was an inflation read that came in a good amount hotter than expected. It was a 8.7% on headline, which is a big number. But although they've been historically true, but also recently on the inflation numbers, they've been behind something like the, the US. Um, so we technically haven't really seen um, what could be... Could, Inclusively, you know, peak rates, uh, inflation rates there yet, although they're down from where they were, but they're real sticky. They're staying in that real high 8% range, which isn't good. Um, and core, I think there was 7.4%. So these are big numbers. So the expectation on terminal um, rates for the Bank of England, the BOE, was, is now almost 6%. And to me, that just feels a little bit outlandish, um, meaning that I do think peak inflation has happened. And I also do think um, that they won't get all the way to 6%. They're at four and a half now on expectation. So, um, as far as terminal, <clears throat> the other thing I'll say to you on that is that we've written about this a lot, but we feel, or I feel the, the reason for the inflation globally, but also in the U S was more supply related, supply chain related. It was more related to the pandemic. It was related to things not being able to be shipped and input prices and commodity prices spiking and all those sorts of things more than was for monetary policy. And I would say the same thing in the UK, except that the difference is that the proximity in all European nations to Ukraine and the effect of the supply chain issues because of the wars is something that matters too. But at the end of the day, if the ECB has a terminal rate prediction of something like three and a half, and I just don't know, the Bank of England is going to get to six, if that's the case, I think that would that would cause something to break there to it too closely interrelated um, economies. Um, housing has been a bright spot. Um, we had numbers out yesterday that I thought were, were pretty shocking. Uh, new home starts were up 27%, which was several hundred thousand more than expected. It's a big, big pop in housing. And it's, it's interesting to me um, on the new housing side, because these home builders, all the big ones that you know of, um, are able to offset high interest rates by just buying down the rate, basically an incentive. So, so if the 30 year mortgage rate is six and a half percent normally, and you go to one of the big home builders and they're going to offer you a four and a quarter, which is what they're doing. Um, and also a slight discount or, or maybe some other incentives, you know, upgrades or something on the house. It's pretty attractive. I think human nature, um, cares more about locking in a 30 year obligation at six and a half percent versus four and a quarter than they necessarily do about pricing, um, just because I think one is considered longer term and, and, and more, more of a liability, more of an obligation. 
So I'm curious tomorrow, we've got existing home sales to see where those come in. Inventory is basically at all time lows. So people aren't selling their existing house to buy another existing house as much because they have a 3% rate and they don't want to lock in something that's in six. On the, but on the new home builds, <clears throat> it's the opposite. That stuff is really moving uh, because of those, dis those incentive discounts. The, the builder is able to sort of um, offset, subsidize the rate and just take a lower margin. Um, I believe that, and this is the index speaking, the home builder index is at all time highs right now. So the stocks are reflecting all this, which is why I love markets, it's very efficient. But um, you know, the fact that input costs on home building a house have come way, way down, lumber, cement, copper, all that stuff has come down. So their margins have, have done better the last 12 months. They can take a little bit of a subsidy and still make a, a good amount of money. And I just don't see it as a bad thing. I think we underbuilt homes in this country for several generations, uh, at least two, and we're playing catch up. And so if the counterintuitive result of high interest rates is that it actually fuels new home builds, I think that's very interesting. I also don't know that many would have predicted that. I think people would have predicted the opposite. I would have a year ago. If you said rates were going from zero to five, what's that going to do to, to housing generally, including new, new homes? I would, have, I would have said that it would have hurt it. Um, and we are seeing some stress in the housing industry, but it's kind of a bright spot with the new stuff. And I think it's pretty interesting. Um, not a lot else. Like I said, kind of a quiet day. There was uh, Secretary of State Blinken was in Beijing um, last couple of days, or call it a week, um, and was sort of un uneventful. I'll call it a nothing burger of a visit. Not a lot was said or done, good or bad. So maybe that's a positive. And then Biden um, had a comment about Xi, uh, the Xi Jinping in, in China being a dictator, and it was retorted back that it was absurd and, you know, that um, irresponsible and this type of stuff. So just sort of round and round we go with the two biggest economies in the world, um, uh, whatever you want to call it, name calling or not getting along as well as they, as they could or whatnot. Um, so all that to say, I'll sort of end it, end it here a little bit, keep it short. Today's the longest day of the year. So hopefully you have some plans this afternoon to do something enjoyable after work day is done. If it's still light outside, I don't know that it will be for me, but we'll see. Um, but it's been great chatting with you. Um, I'll be with you next week. I think we, we, I don't know if we've done a good job telegraph when I'll be speaking, but it's um, Tuesday and Thursday of next week. I'll bring you some, some interesting uh, market data. So I look forward to that. So with that, enjoy your summer solstice. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.